friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to prize him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus hath told you, Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it was a grievous fault. And grievously hath Caesar answered it. Here, under Leva Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honourable man. So are they all, all honourable men. Come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. But Brutus says he was ambitious. And Brutus is an honourable man. He hath brought many captives home to Rome, whose ransoms did the general coffers fill. Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When that the poor have cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition should be mad of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious. And Brutus is an honourable man. You all did see that on the Lupercal I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious. And sure, he is an honourable man. I come not to disprove what Brutus spoke, but here I am to speak what I do know. You all did love him once, not without cause. What cause withhold ye then to mourn for him? O oh, judgment! Thou art fled to brutish beasts, and men have lost their reason. Forgive me. Me heart is in the coffin there with Caesar. And I must pause till it come back to me. But yesterday, the word of Caesar might have stood against the world. Now lies he there, and none so poor to do him reverence. O oh, masters, if I were disposed to stir your hearts and minds to mutiny and rage, I should do Brutus wrong, and Cassius wrong, who you all can owe are honourable men. I will not do them wrong. I rather choose to wrong the dead, to wrong myself and you, than I will wrong such honourable men. But here is a parchment with the cell of Caesar. I found it in his closet. Tis his will. 
let but the commons hear this testament. Which? Pardon me, I do not mean to read. They would go and kiss dead Caesar's wounds, and dip their napkins in his sacred blood. Yea, beg a hair of him for memory, and dying, mention it within their wills. The queer thing it is a rich legacy unto their issue. Have passions, gentle friends, I must not read it. It is not meet you can know how Caesar loved you. You are not wood, you are not stones, but men. And being men, hearing the will of Caesar, it will inflame you, it will make you mad. Tis good you can know not that you are his heirs. For if you should, or what would come of it? Will you be patient? Will you stay a while? I have overshot myself to tell you of it. I fear I wrong the honourable men whose daggers have stabbed Caesar. I do fear it. You will compel me then to read the will. Then mark a ring about the curse of Caesar. And let me show you him that mad the will. Shall I descend? And will you give me leave? If you have tears, Prepare to shed them now. You all do know this mantle. I remember the first time ever Caesar put it on. It was on a summer's evening, in his tent. That day he overcame the nervy eye. Look, in this place ran Cassius Dagarthroch. See what a rent the envious Cascamad. Through this, the well beloved Brutus stabbed, and as he plucked his cursed steel away, Mark how the blood of Caesar followed it. As, rushing out of doors, to be resolved he Brutus so unkindly knocked or no. For Brutus, as you can know, was Caesar's angel. Judge all ye gods how dearly Caesar loved him. This was the most unkindest cut of all. For when the noble Caesar saw him stab, in gratitude, more strong than traitor's arms quite vanquished him, then burst his mighty heart, and in his mantle muffling of his face, even at the base of Pompey's statua, which all the while ran blood. Great Caesar fell. Oh, what a fall was there, me countrymen. Then I, and you, and all of us fell down, whilst bloody treason flourished over us. Oh, now you weep and I perceive you feel the dint of pity. These are gracious drops. Kind souls, what? 
Weep you when you but behold our Caesar's vesture wound it. Here is himself, marred as you see with traitors. Good friends, sweet friends, let me not stir you up to such a sudden flood of mutiny. They that have done this deed are honourable. What private griefs they have, alas, I know not, that mad them do it. They are wise and honourable, and will no doubt with reasons answer you. I come not, friends, to stale away your hearts. I am no orator as Brutus is. But as you know me all, a plain, blunt man that love my friend. And that they know full well, that gave me public life to speak of him. For I have neither wit, nor words, nor worth, action nor utterance, nor the poor of speech to stir men's blood. I only speak right on. I tell you that with you yourselves, Duke, no. Show you sweet Caesar's wounds. Poor dumb mouths. And bid them speak for me. But where I, Brutus, and Brutus Antony, there where an Antony would ruffle up your spirits, and put a tongue in every wound of Caesar, that should move the stones of Rome to rise and mutiny. Yet hear me, countrymen, yet hear me speak. Why, friends, you go to do you can not what? Wherein hath Caesar thus deserved your loves? Alas, you can not. I must tell you then. You have forgot the will I told you of. Here is the will, and under Caesar's sail, to every Roman citizen he gives, to every several man, seventy-five drachmas. Moreover, he hath left you all his walks, his private arbors, and new-planted orchards, on this side Tiber. He hath left them you, and to your heirs for ever. Common pleasures, to walk abroad and recreate yourselves. Here was a Caesar. Whence comes such another? 